Into the show, and welcome to it, folks. Coming to you live from the south coast here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, it is uh, great to be back. Um, we are, of course, uh, first day back in January of 2022. So happy new year to all of you who uh, we haven't spoken to in a while. Uh, we are um, looking forward to... Um, uh, the next hour, we'll be talking with Brian Garvey. He, of course, is um, the uh, great half of our Wednesday show with Larry Korb. Uh, Brian, of course, uh, is the uh, great senior fellow there. Of course, uh, Mass Peace Action is a sponsor of the Jeff Santos Show uh, there at Massachusetts Peace Action. Uh, he, uh, our next friend, our next guest is a friend, yours truly, and he's also the renaissance man of the Jeff Santos Show. He, of course, usually is on at 5.30. We have to juggle a lot of things around since it's the first day. And, uh, you know, this is uh, how we need to move forward, folks. Um, this is a very important year of politics in this country, the democracy at stake. Uh, and nobody better to talk uh, about all of that, particularly in the voting rights, because he is uh, a man who has got his finger on the pulse of what is happening not only in Seattle but around the country. Uh, he is the uh, great journalist with uh, Democracy Watch News. Also, of course, uh, a great musician uh, there in Seattle. He is Mark Taylor Canfield, and he joins us from the 206, the Seattle area code. Mr. Mark, Happy New Year, my man. Yeah, I'm in the studio as usual, Jeff. I was trying to save my by wearing earplugs, but you know, rock and roll has to be loud. But you yeah, got that right, man. Good to talk to you, good to talk to you to talk and to you know, I, I love it. Uh, you're, the, you're the only only uh, guest I know in, in political talk radio that has his uh, his uh, homemade own uh, guitar lick riff. And uh, Jimi Hendrix, eat your heart out, by the way, that was awesome. Um, well, yeah, well, I should tell you, we, you know, I've been really busy with the band lately because. Uh, it's really something that I, I love. I love rock and roll. I was talking to the drummer earlier today about how much, you know, we love bands like Led Zeppelin and the Beatles and all these, the Ramones and people who have really influenced us. But um, a lot of t a lot of this week has been spent actually uh, covering the MLK Day events as executive director for Democracy Watch News. And I just wanted to give a shout out to all the people in the MLK coalition because uh, Dr. King was here in 1961 and, and met with folks like Eddie Rye and Reverend McKinney, who was a friend of his, and um, really, you know, left a, a, a great impression on the city that and his legacy still is alive today and kicking because there were a lot of young folks out in the streets marching this week and talking about Dr. King's legacy and, you know, where we're going to go from here. And I just wanted to say, you know, great job by the uh, Northwest African American Museum bringing Nikki Giovanni, world famous poet and educator, uh, into town um, and doing a great series of live stream events. So kudos to everybody for being out there, and especially during this time when, you know, in, in states like Georgia, voting rights are under such threat and there's so much voter suppression going on, especially, you know, targeting people of color. So in the, in the midst of all that, um, the spirits are high still here in Seattle, and people are looking forward to a better future. So let's put it that way, Jeff. I just wanted to get that out there for folks. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, and, I, and I'm glad that you start us off with, because this was, uh, of course, uh, Martin Luther King's uh, holiday on Monday. And look, uh, we look at the voting rights issue. We, we, we've, we discussed so many. We didn't really get too deep into voting rights. And I want to I wanna get your concern here, because to me, and this is where I don't think we're talking about liberal or uh, or more progressive or more centrist. I mean, it's a simple fact, you know, the last time I checked that, you know, if your vote doesn't count, Meaning, if voter suppression is allowed in places, the 19 states that our good friend Alan Minsky just talked about it, PDA America, please join folks. It's a great organization, Progressive Democrats of America. You know, your vote don't count. It means you can't win because, you know, if the other team has votes that count in a lot of white people, then, you know, it's not going to be able to be a victory for those who consider themselves Democrats or progressives who are African-American. And I'm wondering, of course, 
I referenced Jimi Hendrix. Seattle has a sizable African-American population. It's not as large as, say, New York or Chicago or Atlanta. I understand that. But I think that the progressive elements of Seattle politics, to me, you know, really need to step up and lead the way. And I don't say step up in the sense that they haven't stepped up. I just think that they're going to have to lead where other cities and areas of the country may not be leading uh, sometimes because they, they, you know, they're sort of handcuffed in some ways. But I, I really believe that this is an issue that will be determinative not only of this year, but over the next decade or two. Because if we fall into a fascist state where Republicans end up winning, not because their ideas are better, that would be one thing, it would be because because you're certain Democrats and, and people of color, young voters on top of that, black, white, brown, Asian, they're not being able to have their vote counted. And that's problematic. That's why Biden said, I don't know if the election is going to be uh, legal in 2022. Your thoughts on that, Mark, and how young people in Seattle and people in progressive America there in the 206 are thinking about this issue. Well, first of all, a lot of folks are moving here from all over the world. Uh, There's a lot of folks from Asia and South Asia moving here as well. We have, you know, a representative who was born in India in in Congress. Um, uh, Our, you know, most famous city council member was also born in India. So uh, Seattle is becoming more and more diverse every day because of so many people moving here to work in the tech industry, especially. And so it is a major concern for people of color it's also, I guess, you know, a concern worldwide because um, one thing that was pretty chilling to me was hearing uh, Joe Biden, our president, last night um, during his address to the to the Democrats um, through the DNC, saying, you know, uh, in places like China and Russia, uh, they consider democracy to be an outmoded and inefficient way of governing in the 21st century because it takes so long. You know, to reach consensus and things are changing so fast in the world that, it, you know, it's an inefficient uh, way of doing business. And, you know, I just quote what Winston Churchill, who said that, you know, democracy is the worst form of government except for all the rest. You know, we have to stick um, to our principles in this country. It's why this country was founded, and though we've never quite lived up to those um, those ideals that the founding fathers, you know, uh, in, ensconced in the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights, we have to s- stay on this road. And, um, you know, there's also some complaints about the middle-of-the-road uh, uh, way of doing things that Joe Biden kind of pushes. He is an older man. He He's in his 70s. He does represent sort of a, a post-World War II generation that had a different attitude about things. It doesn't always um, jive with FDR's, you know, uh, principles uh, and the ideals that that he brought to this country, you know, through the the New Deal. Um, but you know, and I'm a little bit worried that instead of being in the middle of the road, we're just off the road now with the the hood up and you know, and and, and working on the machine. It's we're gonna get run over by that right tractor now. trailer soon if we don't be careful. Yeah, and you know, and also you know, shout out uh, to the people at boldprogressives.org and our video conference last week with Representative Jamie Raskin was also very eye-opening, and he said very directly that uh, democracy is under threat, that these are perilous times, and we have to be very, very steadfast in fighting against um, folks in the Republican Party who, you know, are being supported by a lot of uh, white supremacists and neo-fascists. This is a very difficult time. He he uh, talked about the Trump family as a crime family and said that, you know, we all really, really need to pay attention to these principles. And, of course, as executive director for Democracy Watch News, that's our main mission statement is, you know, promoting and covering democracy movements around the world. Well, we have to do that in this country right now. And I just keep thinking, and I was thinking this the whole time when I was um, out there covering the, the marches and rallies at City Hall in Seattle for MLK Day, listening to young poets like uh, a poet named Masai talk about, you know, how black history isn't even taught in, in most public schools these days and how far we have to go to actually um, get to where Dr. King wanted us to be and, and his dream for the future of this country. We have a long ways to go. We should have we should be much closer to that dream by now. And, and I just wonder, what would Dr. King be saying today? Would he be... Um, calling for mass demonstrations and civil disobedience in some of these states like Georgia, where the black population is being targeted by the Republicans, you know, for vote suppression, because they know that um, 
most African Americans are not going to vote for a party that's supported by white supremacists. You know, that's where we're at in the in 20, um, 20, 2021, uh, 2022. You know, this is where we've been in, in the United States, and we we have to do much better, Jeff. It's it's very uh, perilous times, and uh, and I wonder what some of our founding fathers would think about these times too. So that those are the things that have been going through my mind, and and I do hope that. Uh, the people in Washington State and the people in the Puget Sound area on the Salish Sea here and folks in Seattle will take a lead in trying to make sure that democracy is the number one priority in all of our politics and uh, all of our art and cultural uh, endeavors. Because if we don't uh, save it right now, I mean, it's, it's such a sad state of affairs to think that Yolanda um, King, Dr. King's granddaughter, uh, is saying that, you know, there, there's... Uh, more vote suppression now than before she was born. It's getting worse, and we have this new Jim Crow that we all need to fight against. And there was a lot of talk during the MLK March, too, about, you know, about having white allies and how important that is. But, you know, I'm going to tell people, uh, if, if you are going to be a white ally of this movement for... Um, for the enfranchisement of black folks across the country, then be ready and be willing to accept um, the criticism of a historically white-dominated society because there there's a lot of anger and frustration out there. And uh, once again, I just wonder, how, w- how would Dr. King feel about this? What would be his response? Would, be, would he be calling for mass demonstrations right now? I, well, I, I kind of so. wonder... Well, I yeah, think he'd be calling for that. I think he'd be calling for, you know, uh, not only meetings with the president, as he did with Johnson, uh, but he, he would be uh, demanding uh, that uh, we don't go backwards, which, you know, we've done with the Shelby love of, uh, Shelby uh, edict from the Supreme Court in 2013, which rolled back the voting rights that he fought for so hard in 1965. And, uh, you know, this this is uh, this is tragic, not only for African-Americans, but again, for the whole population. I want to go to another progressive city. Uh, and that is, of course, Minneapolis, and talk to our good friend John, uh, who I think agrees with you on, on many of your comments. John, you're next with Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santos Show. What say you, sir? Yeah, I, I mean, as far as voting rights, I think we're going backwards. Uh, we already have uh, some people, uh, you know, governors, uh, that are already moving in a fascist direction. Uh, yeah, one-party states are not democracies. India is not really a democracy, neither is uh, Brazil. When you have just one party, no selection, uh, that's totalitarianism, or it's uh, moving in that direction. And certainly, you know, we already have signs of that. I, I mean, if you... If you uh, put somebody on administrative leave for doing their job in a pandemic uh, and you're the governor of the state, Florida, you know, um, we, we have a big problem. You know, that's a major problem. It's no longer a Republican Party, uh, you know, uh, um, supporting conservative values. It's a fascist party supporting uh, conservative values. And along with that is uh, Mitch McConnell, who, you know, is separating, separating out black people from other Americans. That's also, it's racist, it's backward, uh, and this is where we're at. And we've, you know, unfortunately lost the battle uh, for voting rights. And the only thing we have left now is to uh, just, you know, raise ire and, and protest and uh, double down on trying to, uh, you know, work within each state uh, to, un, un, you know, to get people to vote. Uh, you know, it must be exhausting if you're a black person in, in Georgia and, you know, you have your, you know, maybe working several jobs just to, you know, survive because the standard of living for a lot of people in Georgia is not very high, unfortunately. And that's what a lot of working class people do. And then on top of that, you have to do double duty now with, uh, with voting rights because you're going to be denied uh, the possibility of even expressing yourself uh, in in this democracy that 's where we 're at and and you know, and part of it is the fault of the Democratic Party too, who have done uh, and this has already been discussed and you know on this show today, but you know 
a really crappy job in trying to get this out. One of the people that had sunk voting rights is an LGBTQ person who essentially just turned her back on her supporters in her state of Arizona. I'm talking about Kristen Cinema. How does that work? And how do black people, black and brown people, of which there's a lot in Arizona, there's a lot of, there's a huge Hispanic population there. Uh, I, I think it approaches like fifty percent of the state. How how would you feel? You know, this no. Is, I mean, this it's it's absolute. again, it's more than African Americans, more than Latinos, more than Asian yeah. Americans. And, it goes and, on and on know, and on. And, and in just in Atlanta, and, you have three of those populations again. Even though yeah. a lot of people recognize Atlanta as a leading and, African American uh, uh, city. It, no, you're you're exactly right. Yeah. Let me get Mark's perspective and it's the here. Rest of us. Too. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, you know, you, if you're yep. white and progressive, and particularly if you're young, yep. white and young, uh, I should say, mm-hmm. young and white progressive, then, then you're also in that in that category. So it's it's more than just as as many African Americans will tell you, it's more than just a black thing when you talk about voting rights. Um, and I'm wondering, uh, Mark Taylor Canfield, uh, uh, I want to get your thoughts here. Is that a lot of young progressive whites who voted for Bernie Sanders and voted for a lot of other progressive candidates there, including your your great city councilor, so on, uh, you know, they, they they must feel somewhat uh, concerned, too. It's it's not just those in the African-American community. Of course, they're front and center. They're the they're the big targets. But it's pretty much, you know, uh, folks that are, are voting Democratic on a regular basis that the Republicans don't want to uh, deal with. Yeah, I mean, it, it involves so much of our population. That there are a lot of folks who are moving to Seattle for tech jobs from the Middle East, too, in the Near East. Um, a lot of folks from Africa here, a large uh, Ethiopian diaspora here. So, you know, people from all over the world come to this country hoping that they are going to experience uh, freedom and justice and democracy. And what they're seeing uh, especially from the Republican Party, is exactly the opposite. It's a it's a party that, even when they're in the minority, want to bully and control people and tell them what to think. Uh, they want to control uh, people's education in the schools. Um, you know, I I had a I knew we were in trouble when uh, Mitch McConnell was asked about the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, you know, we talk about the fact that there's no National Voting Rights Act. How about the fact that we've never been able to pass an Equal Rights Amendment to protect the rights of, of women. And when Mitch McConnell was asked about that about a year ago, around the time of, of Trump's impeachment processes, uh, he said, I'm not for it. Well, first he said the what, as if he had no idea what, he, what people were talking about. And then his response was, I'm against it. You know, I'm not for that. So come on. I mean, what what century are these people 50%. living in? When, when is the United States finally going to enter the 21st century? When are we finally going to have uh, universal health care. When are we finally going to have free uh, college education? When are we finally going to have voting rights and and finally, you know, step into the 21st century in the way that I'm sure Dr. King and and some of our founding fathers would have would would expect to see and would try to be holding us accountable right now. I mean, we've backslidden there. You know, as far as I can tell, tell looking back in history, there was a big backslide that, you know, during the Reagan administration when we went back about 20 years on a lot of these social issues. And we've never really caught up since. And the Democrats continue to backpedal, too, when they're dealing with the Republicans, you know, instead of taking. Well, that's the thing that the has to change. The fight has to change. We cannot allow and, and just sort of, you know, well, we, we respect the gentleman from the other side kind of thing, which, of course, Biden would always do when he was a senator. Oh, I bow to the other side. You know, uh, my distinguished gentleman from uh, Nevada, you know, who's really given you a middle finger, uh, but, you know, is given is not really doing anything to be uh, a distinguished gentleman or a distinguished, uh, um, you know, female. I mean, it, it's it to me, that's where the fight has to start with Biden. And it has to be with every Democrat who's speaking on his behalf. And those, of course, in the House and Senate. Schumer has to lay the foundation and he has to sort of say, look, we are not going to allow two people from our own party and the Republican obstructionist party of 2022 to continue to have this sort of of impact on American life. It has to change and it has to change now. And we're going to use every tool at our disposal to do it. And that's what they got to do. And they got to get the OK from the president and they got to go for it. Be bold. I mean, really, I mean, more than likely, uh, Mark and John. 
there's there's very likely uh, unlikely that Mr. Biden is going to run for reelection. He's going to be 82. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. So do the best you can in the four years and hand it off, hopefully to a more progressive person and let them take the baton and run with it. That to me is the best you can offer. But there's no reason to hold back now. I mean, you know, it, it, this is not like you you have to hold uh, you know a line here for your reelection. There is no reelection for Joe Biden, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I know he doesn't want to announce it but really he should he should basically open up the door and say you know no holes barred i am going for it i am going to be bold because i want to have the american people you know uh have a government that they can respect and uh can honor honor the the principles of this country um well i'll quote our governor jay Inslee, who said that the sooner we turn over, over the halls of government to the younger generation, the better off we'll all be. Because these these old folks that have been running things just don't get it. Uh, they have a lot of corporate interests and Wall Street money backing them, so they, they don't have that same hunger for democracy and freedom of speech and freedom of assembly that the folks in the Black Lives Matter movement have or the folks that were marching here in Seattle on, on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I'm very hopeful that the younger generation coming up and I see that in, in the music clubs here because, you know, um, I was talking to the label guys at Sub Pop the other day about the Seattle music scene. And there's a lot of new young bands coming up. There's a lot of new energy. And a lot of those people are politically far to the left of somebody like Joe Biden. And the fact that the Democratic Party doesn't want to acknowledge that is one reason why, you know, we've had these problems. Because the young folks in this country and the people that I meet at the, at the rock clubs... Um, are are not uh, interested in listening to people in their 80s tell them about their own future because they they really don't think these people have a clue at all. So it's time for young folks to take over these political parties, to get out there in the streets and be heard. And um, I'm telling you, Jeff, they're not going to back down, and we will hear more from them. From them, uh, we will hear more from the Greta Thunbergs and. Uh, you know, like the poet Messiah here in Seattle, who is still in high school. They are the ones who have the passion. They're the ones who are moving us forward, not not the people in these French political parties. Well, we're not playing. Uh, we won't back down by Petty, uh, courtesy of Eddie Vedder, who you know well. But uh, a little bit of the who. It is hour three of the Jeff Santo Show, and welcome to it, folks. Coming to you live from the South Coast here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, it is uh, great to be back. Um, we are, of course, 